Strap in for the world's fastest half hour. You're on the straight line, presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts. And brought to you by Hercules Tires and Grunt Style Apparel. Now, here are your hosts, Doug Herbert and Marty Huff. This is the Straight Line on Drag Racing. Thanks for stopping by our half hour of horsepower. Appreciate you being with us. Our guests today are two of the best in NHRA history and winners at Bristol. Tony Schumacher, number one in top fuel wins, and Ron Capps, number two all time in funny car. The burnout is complete, and we're set to launch another edition of the Straight Line. Wherever you may be, coast to coast, around the world, this is the Straight Line on Drag Racing at MRN.com, along with four-time IHRA Top Fuel Champion and 10-time NHRA National Event winner, Doug Herbert. I am Marty Huff, coming off the Thunder Valley Nationals at Bristol Dragway. Coming up as advertised, Ron Capps, Tony Schumacher, and a big congratulations going out to Jed Coughlin Jr. for winning two in a row. Hadn't won in almost four years, and now all of a sudden, that elite team has got it figured out and uh, uh, made it two in a row. Headed up to Norwalk this weekend to try to make it three in a row. But Doug, I think really, kind of the, if we're looking at it from a historic perspective, the story in, in Pro Stock, Greg Anderson, 100 polls number one qualifiers that is absolutely crazy there's only three other guys who have ever done that and that's uh, you're putting yourself in the high cotton right. when you're talking about bob glinton when wj and john force right exactly no great job by that whole team over there that they put together at uh at KV Racing, I'm Greg Anderson, Jason Line, uh, you know, last year powered the champion. So I think that just what they're doing over there is no, yeah. you can't doubt what they're doing. What yeah. they're doing is working. It's it's really good. I mean, they've set low ETs, they've set top speeds, they've won championships, they've won a lot of races. Just great job for that whole team. And Greg Anderson, of course, for really being the spearhead to, behind the whole thing. Yep. And then uh, and passing his mentor, uh, Warren Johnson, on the all time finals list, uh, uh, obviously, uh, it didn't. Uh, get it done this weekend uh, and putting it in the winner's circle. But uh, it, it did get by his mentor, Warren Johnson, uh, for uh, all-time finals. Um, it, it, yeah. it, people and forget. It's funny to listen to Warren Johnson oh, you know, yeah. over the years, right? Warren <laughs> will talk about, what do you think about Greg Anderson? Eh, I taught him everything he knows. I didn't teach him everything I know. It's a, you know, kind of a funny yeah. thing, but uh, right. yeah, I'll, obviously uh, Greg Anderson learned quite a bit from Warren Johnson over the years and, yeah. and uh, you know, there's no denying that. And I think at the end of the day, Warren Johnson, I'm sure is very proud of him. Yeah. Too. Yeah, uh, but I, I don't think Warren Johnson is also going to give anything. You want a minute? No, 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 no. I, absolutely <laughs> not. All right, we'll, we'll take our first break, and when we come back, winner of the Funny Car Class at the Thunder in Thunder Valley Nationals, Ron Caps will join us next. Stop by your local O'Reilly Auto Parts store for O'Reilly Universal Premixed Antifreeze and Coolant for only $6.99 a gallon. Protect your engine from overheating with O'Reilly Universal Premixed Antifreeze and Coolant, now $6.99 a gallon at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. When the smoke settles, the entertainment never stops. Time just flies when you're busy, I think. On race weekends, your favorite NASCAR personality is an everyday superhero. And Martin Truex Jr. is a champion. But when they leave the racetrack, they're just like everyone else. You never know if you'll get another chance to do it. I'm Susie Armstrong. Join me on a daily journey as we discuss the hot topics and engaging personalities of NASCAR Nation. Ned Jarrett's World of Racing, weekdays on the Motor Racing Network. MRN.com. Original online audio, video, and digital content. Need the latest information on each week's races? Check out the MRN.com race center. Need to find your local radio station for MRN original programs? And Camping World Truck, Xfinity, and Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series races? Go to stations on MRN.com. All the latest NASCAR news and opinion pieces, race schedules, driver standings, and archives of MRN programs, MRN race broadcasts, and so much more. MRN.com. <laughs> Welcome back to The Straight Line, brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Here's more with Marty Huff and Doug Herbert. Appreciate you being here on MRN.com this week. And on the Racing Electronics Hotline with us right now is driver of the Napa Dodge and winner of the Thunder Valley Nationals at Bristol Dragway. He is Ron Caps. Ron, thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Congratulations on the win. 
Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. What a weekend. We finally got back to where we thought the car should be running this year. And as you know, I've been talking about us going back to the five district we ran last year and the year before. So it was nice to, uh, last weekend to finally get back there. Hey, Ron, so uh, how was your birthday? We, we, we sorry, we kind of <laughs> were a little bit late hitting the gas here, but uh, happy <laughs> birthday to you. So I guess that when it Bristol was kind of like a little bit of an earthy birthday present, that's awesome. Yeah, no, and it's cool because uh, my son, Caden, just got out of school, so I, I brought him with. Uh, we landed yesterday, drove from Detroit down to the Cleveland area, and then uh, heading to a Napa event. We're going to go do some sport clay shooting with a bunch nice. of Napa guys, which ought to be fun today, and uh, get ready for the race tomorrow. Now, you, you talked about Tolbert going back to the five-disc clutch when NHRA decided that they were going to um, differ the, the track prep. Um, when he came to you with this, what was your reaction? And if he's gone to two to th- uh, two of the last three finals, so it, it was probably a, a Tobler-esque move, I, I'm just guessing, on your part. Well, we did it in Topeka and just didn't say anything. We didn't want to tell anybody mm-hmm. anything. You know, you don't want to make a, some sort of a announcement or something like that and then go out and suck worse. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. we, uh, we, we knew if we can get it back. But here's the funniest part. Tober and I were talking about it. We're like, man, as soon as they stopped, you know, putting less spray down and basically uh, we had less grip on these tracks. And, and that's any trace of this is the way it's going to be, period. So get used to it. So adapt. And you know, more and more races went along, and we just didn't, you know, I've talked to you guys before. We went in that eight-race win streak last year, uh, four in a row at one point. He could almost tell me exactly what the car was going to run each time we went up there, and I knew what to expect. And I could watch him in the computer when I sit up there, and I knew what they were doing. So he got to, to know the car so well where the sixth disc, he just didn't. And we did it, you know, to make our whole team better at DSR because everybody else had six disc, and we didn't want to. You know, you can't compare when you're talking to Dickie Venables or, yeah. or whoever on the team and, and uh, not have the same clutch. So he's so neat with that five disc, and it was neat this last weekend in Bristol because he was telling me the same thing he used to, exactly how to, you know, what it was going to run, what it was going to do, what to expect, and uh, that was nice. So we did it in Topeka. We knew it would take a couple races because it's a different disc than we had last year. So we just took him, a, you know, five or six runs to sort of get used to it, and it just seemed like it was uh, right back to the old ways. Well, it seemed like you got to kind of figure it out with putting uh, Forrest and then Robert Hyde on the trailer, uh, you know, up here at Bristol, uh, having your kid up there. Was your was your kid up there with you on Father's Day for the win, too, at Bristol? No, 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 just uh, this weekend. Uh, he was finishing school, which is a bummer. You know, my dad, I won last year at that same race, and I got to send a trophy out to California and, told my dad to take it around to all his buddies you know he's retired now so you know what those guys do when they retire they just they all meet for lunch on tuesday mornings and do and just stare, stare at their hot rods street rods <laughs> so um but this year yeah i had nobody around but we gave it the trophy to don you know we uh we put him through a lot by not winning this year we figure uh you know we're sort of like his kids the seven drivers and it's, it was nice to give him that win well, yeah, and the 300th career win for Don Schumacher Racing, that's got to be uh, that's got to be a pretty good feather in his cap as well. Yeah, you know, man, I, I didn't even know that till later we got at the media room and they told us. So I, little things like that come along after you win. I didn't even realize I was almost a 60 win. That was my 59th, which I don't, you know, you think you'd keep track of stuff like that. I just don't. And it's always really, really cool to hear that. And it was really cool for Tobler. He said, man, I, and I, I can't even tell you, he just said it a couple of days ago, but the amount of wins that we have together was the most he's had with one driver, but um, hmm. that's pretty impressive. And he yeah. was, you know, he's really excited about trying to give me my 60th win, which is a big, big number in NHRA. And, yeah. um, you know, those things like 300th win for Don, that's huge. Yeah, and the consistency, Ron, blows me away. This was a, a, a track that was at uh, one point measured at 143 degrees on Sunday. It was just boiling out there. And the, the track has its, quote, imperfections. I mean, it's, it's, um, it, it's been around a while, and that, that surface is not exactly perfect. It's not uh, what, uh, what it was at Virginia. But running a 24, a 20, a 24, and a 23 on a boiling hot racetrack on a, a, an imperfect surface just kind of blows me away. It, it, tell us about uh, it just the, the consistency on Sunday out of that Napa car. 
Well, Marty, there you again. I, I didn't even realize that we ran those numbers that close together, to be honest with you, and I forgot we went 23 in the final. I, I stepped on the gas in the final. And i got to be honest. I mean, we did not have, and Tobler and I were both talking between each run, we didn't have the fastest car or the quickest car. In fact, mm. at least two of those sessions or runs on Sunday, we didn't have lane choice. Well, we didn't have it going in the first round against John Force, and there was no oil down in front of us. So yeah. we felt like, oh, my God, we had all the cards stacked against, against John Force. And um, lo and behold, Tobler went right down through there, just just like I said with the five disc. Um, Robert Height, I mean, that's a that's a final round of Pomona for the championship type of team, you know, that you're going to meet up with, and they're always tough. And then J.R. Todd in the semis, we didn't have lane choice for them either. We got put back in that left lane. And imperfections, of, you know, I've been using the word character. The track has had yeah. character. And yeah. I, listen, we we a lot of tracks we won't give them free passes. There's a few we go to that are just flat out bumpy, and they need to fix it before we go back. We will give these guys at SMI, Bruton and Marcus Smith. You know, you give them a free pass because of everything they do with all their other tracks. And I would bet money that they're going to have that report at Bristol by next year. I, I was surprised they didn't this year. But you know what? It was, it did have sort of character. It reminded me of Darlington for the NASCAR guys. It just <laughs> was, it was not perfect, but it was, it was fun when you win. And that left lane had a huge bump as it did last year. So this made things, you know, a little more interesting. But we joked last year. We were in the winter circle saying this is probably one of the more gratifying wins and winter circles because you just feel way more worn out. Like you've mentally done so much more trying to, to prepare for each run. So I thought it spun the tires more and put a cylinder out, which it did in the final, but we were going in there and hop and Tasca's team, they were a better car all day. And sure enough, Tober said, we're going to get after it early. We have to make up ground and we've got to beat them or they're going to beat us. And uh, that's what it did. You mentioned John force and beating him in the first round. You have been in John force's corner all year long. This has not have been the year that John Force has wanted He's, for a lot of different reasons. Some mechanical, there have been some driving problems, but you have been a staunch proponent of John Force. Why is it important for you to uh, to remind people that, hey, Force is going to be back and, you know, just keep rooting for the guy? Well, you know, going back to last year, Robert Hyde and I were battling for a championship in Vegas. Force uh, lined up next to him and set that second round and and did the old you know left turn against the wall without his blinker on and, yeah. and I came out and said something on social media and I got just ridiculed by his fans. Oh my God, it was almost death threats. But um, I don't know. It it's you know I, I got a couple messages from Snake and Mongoose, believe it or not, and uh, and it was strange how. Um, they reminded me, and I think it kind of came that it was personal for them, but it reminded them that you got to respect. I, I think it was sort of passing the torch. They uh, they reminded me that I needed to, uh, the John Force is John Force. He's carried the sport, and like I said in my interview, he's got more funny car in, in his pinky than, than us of most of the field of drivers right now in our whole bodies. So I don't know. I just, uh, he's always been a good guy, and the way I look at it, and Doug will tell you, um, when I came in as a rookie, Don Perelm hired me because we wanted to beat John Force in Funny Car. Nobody could do it, and that's why I became a Funny Car driver. And uh, and I don't think it's him. I think it's his car, and I didn't, I didn't think he bumped his head and forgot how to drive. I just think he was trying a little hard. And You know, the guy has gotten out and mentioned other driver sponsors more than they have at times when he knows maybe they're not doing so well. So he's just oh, he's got a big heart, and I just always feel like he would have done the same thing for me. Yeah, Force has always been a good guy. There's no doubt about it. Looking out for everybody from time to time, and uh, man, great win up there uh, this last weekend. Proud to see you guys get that win. And and Tobler, he can get it down the track, whether it's low ET of all time or get it down the track, just the best to get the job done. And he he can do it both ways. He knows how to do it both ways. That's for sure. Yeah, no, he's Doug. You know, he's he's he can he's very versatile. And it's, uh, it's I just love racing with a guy. I love celebrating with him. I love racing with them. I love, I love when we're not doing good. I love being bummed out with them. I just enjoy every aspect of of showing up at the racetrack and and getting through a weekend, whether it's good or bad, and then finally succeeding. It's just, uh, you know, it's a great guy to be around. Well, Ron Caps, congratulations on the win at Bristol. Good luck this weekend coming up at Norwalk. You got their kid with uh, your kid there with you, and and uh, maybe that'll be your lucky charm again. I hope so, man. We're looking forward. It ought to be a good weekend, brand new track. So 
uh, the Baiters, you know how they are. They are first class and everything, and, and we're looking forward to another great weekend. Good luck. Driver of the Napa right, Dodge, Ron Caps, joining us here on the Straight Line. Before we go to break, I uh, want to mention a new sponsor here on the Straight Line, and that is the Ridge. Now, uh, the Ridge is a minimal front pocket wallet, as you see right here, designed to let you ditch your bulky traditional wallet. The, uh, the Ridge wallet is slim, RFID blocking, and has a lifetime guarantee. It's the last wallet you'll ever buy. It uh, comes in titanium, carbon fiber, aluminum, or polycarbonate, and over in, uh, and available in over a dozen, dozen different <laughs> styles and colors. Get 10% off uh, with free shipping worldwide. Go by the RidgeWallet.com. That's RidgeWallet.com, and use the promo code Racing. Ditch your bulky wallet today. Get the Ridge at RidgeWallet.com. When we return, we'll talk to Top Fuel winner Tony Schumacher coming up after this. Citywide to countryside, whatever you drive, wherever you go. Hercules Tires has the value, selection, and industry-leading warranty to get you there, no matter where the road takes you. To learn more, visit HerculesTire.com. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts and pick up five parts of O'Reilly full synthetic motor oil and a MicroGuard filter for $19.99. Extend the life of your vehicle and save money with five parts of O'Reilly full synthetic motor oil and a MicroGuard filter for $19.99. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. All the dirt, winged excitement, and closest racing in America is featured each week on MRN's Winged Nation. Steve Post and our team of dirt racing experts bring you a trackside perspective on the heroes and personalities of sprint car racing. From Pennsylvania to California, the Midwest, Florida, and of course, Knoxville. Tune in to MRN's Winged Nation, presented by Sage Fruit, each Saturday on MAV-TV. And MRN's Winged Nation, presented by Hercules Tires. Live Tuesdays at noon Eastern and on demand at MRN.com. You're listening to The Straight Line, brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Now, back to Marty Huff and Doug Herbert. Big thanks to Ron Kapp for joining us on The Straight Line and on the Racing Electronics Hotline right now is the winner of the Thunder Valley Nationals. In the top fuel division is the driver of the U.S. Army top fuel dragster for Don Schumacher Racing. Tony Schumacher joins us, Sarge. Congratulations on the wins. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Man, it's good to be back on the show. It's been over a year. What's going on? I thought you guys <laughs> might have gotten canceled or something. <laughs> no, luckily we didn't. We're still no. here. We were, we've been waiting on you. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I've been waiting on me too. Don't worry. <laughs> well, great job up there this weekend. Uh, first win with Mike Neff as a crew chief, I, I, I think. So, uh, yep. kind of like you got that thing turned around the right direction. You know how to win, obviously, and, and uh, so does your team. You know, I mean, Pomona at the beginning of the year, we were leading the final round against Coletta, and, the, and we broke a rear end, you know. And a few races later, we're leading in Vegas in the four wide, and the car shuts off, you know. So we've had a car capable of winning that should have won a few races and should have, could have, you know, how they, they don't pay the bills. So right. we, we made – I won't say we. When NHRA made the track prep change, we struggled. Everybody did. Yeah. You know, you you take a car that for 20 years we've developed into this monster of a machine, more discs, bigger clutches, more power, and then you say, now we're going to back the race back from 100% to 65. Good luck. That's essentially what they did. You. You know, leaving it to the responsibility of the teams to figure out how to slow them down. I get the idea. I really do. But we've built parts that really can't be slowed down to that. I mean, we our six disc clutch, you know, with 65% thickness, we go back to five disc clutch. That's what you need to do. You know, we got too much weight, too much stuff you're slinging. So it was a struggle to figure out how to slow them down. And 
Mike and Phil, as smart as they are, man, we just took a beating for a few races. But we're the best of adversity. We've been doing this for a long time. We are a good come-from-behind team and a good team that suffers through the endless hours of work and figures it out. Man, and they did a great job. Got it figured out in Bristol where it was, I don't know, two or three hundred degrees, I think. Yeah, I'm, right. I, I'm just waking up. You, you've got, Doug, you've done it for a long time. When you're in the car and it's 141-degree racetrack oh. and the sun's pounding on you, it takes a few days to become human again. It's, yeah. So I'm just getting there. You're, well, good. Well, you were you were better than human on Sunday, and like you say, no matter what the numbers are, you guys ran low ET second round, and you had lane choice going into the final. So whatever the numbers are, don't really matter. You were the best of the cars that were there, and that's what wins the races. It does. And when we were doing, you know, I think you probably witnessed it. You make a change qualifying, and you make a mistake. And so that's what we we made a mistake, and it taught us something that we never would have learned trying. You know, we never would have tried something like that, and it paid off. We, we learned it, and, and I'll tell you what, now now that we have some information in our bank like that, um, <laughs> we're going to be hard to beat. We got some stuff that we learned that it's just priceless with this track surface. But, you know, NHRA, they're going to they're gonna watch me start winning, and then they'll up it to 85% or there'll be something. <laughs> they just love me. <laughs> beat my Salinas in the final round. These guys like Salinas, like Scott Palmer, like Clay Milliken, these are guys that are getting, I mean, they're not getting lucky. They're getting good info from really smart people, Alan Johnson, the Torrance family, Dave Grubnick. These are now not first out guys. These are cars that you're going to run more than likely second, third, fourth round. you got to be watching these guys. So it, Top Fuel right now is getting really, really competitive. Not that it wasn't before, but now there's three or four cars out there that you got to throw into the mix. I bet there's eight or nine. To be honest, you took, you took the cars with all the power and you stopped them producing by making the track not take the power. Mm. You, brought it, you brought it to the other cars, and that's okay. I... You know, as a fan, nobody wants to see me win every week. It's just the way it is. You know, that, it, it, I understand that. No different than you want to see you win. I, I do. I yeah. really <laughs> win every week. You know, I, it doesn't disappoint me or my team in any way. But everyone else in the world, even my fans years ago, we won 15 races one year. I was getting hate mail from my best friend. You know, <laughs> they, they were just sick of it. They wanted to watch a race, not just one car. And you know, it's, I understand. So I think. I think we, when we ran 336 this year in Phoenix, NHRA said, that's too fast. Uh, the funny cars ran 339. They said, we're backing this down. I get what they're doing. The fans are – they're still loving it. I mean, they're coming out and seeing two side by this every week. You know, they're seeing someone new. They don't – it's not just one car. So I think what they're trying to do is working just fine. And and if, if I suffer through it a little bit, okay, I'll, I'll get through it. We, again, we've still got the smartest people in our camp. We'll still figure out how to go out and win races. Uh, maybe just not as many, but the championship's still decided by the guy who's king of the hill at the end. Let's, right. let's just play the game and see who gets a trophy. Winning on Father's Day has to be really special. And, and uh, now that Larry Dixon is uh, on the sidelines, uh, he's, he quit taking those Father's Day wins away. I mean, he won like five or six of them. So uh, winning on Father's Day has to be pretty special for you, right? It's fantastic. You know, my dad's part of the team. The doubling up was amazing. Uh, we just had, we just had the perfect weekend. You know, we, and it was hot. And you know, when you suffer through a weekend like that and you still pull it off, it's great. It, my, the smile on my dad's face was awesome. Um, you know, Salinas, man, I, I felt for him. He's got his kids there, and yeah, you know, he, he was tearing up a bit. He's a good dude. You know, nice new guy out there. We, we love seeing him out there. But you know, I, I mean, I, I left first and ran low ET. I was not taking that dude lightly. So, you know, for his fans, they need to know that we gave them everything that they earned and deserved getting into that final round. So I'm proud of that guy. You know, I know NHRA gets sick of hearing us, oh, I like this guy. I, I don't really know him. I'm not saying I like him. I'm saying it's nice to have him out there. Yeah. He's doing a good job driving, uh, and he's got a good car. So the fans, you know, we we ran a 402, and he ran a 403. I mean, in, in the round before that. There was nothing easy about that final round. We gave him everything that he deserved. 
yeah, and that was one of those finals where you just go out there and, and you, you know, nobody had a big advantage, really. You did have lane choice, but you didn't have a big advantage going into that final. So pulling it off. You did what you always do, though. You always kind of go up there with that final, and you got a little bit more, and you dig down a little bit more. And uh, that that's kind of seems like what you did on that one. So great job, man, taking home the win. I know your dad. We just played a video a second ago. He was pretty pumped up and excited watching Caps win and then watching you win at the Thunder Valley. Man, a lot of pressure. You know, we've gone a long time. He's you're, it's the army car, man. You know, you don't go this long. You just don't. And we had some pressure on us, and, and we like that. We like the pressure. We just we were blown away at how long it took. We had so many good moments to to capture these things, and and we let a few of them slip. So glad to be back. Uh, I'll tell you what, I would not want to race my car against me hmm. in the next couple of races. I think we have an outstanding machine uh, coming into the right time of the season. So um, you, you mentioned being in a 141-degree uh, racetrack and race car, and, and so you probably sweat out a whole bunch. Uh, you probably lost enough weight to where you can go to Norwalk and, and, and eat a pound of ice cream for a buck, right? Absolutely. I might even spend two bucks. <laughs> 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 Always a good time going to Norwalk. It's usually hot there, but um, they put on a, a great show, and that's, that's kind of what it's all about, right? Yeah, and it's it's old school racing, you know, it's such a great, it's just a great place, man. It's Central America. It's where I grew up, it's friends and, you know, the Midwest. It's, it's just, I enjoy it, you know, I really do. And that, and the best part is I'm taking all three of my kids, then we're going from nice. there up to Boulder Junction, Wisconsin, to a little country club, do some fishing for a week, and then go straight from there to Epic. So I'm gone for three weeks just, just doing the deal, man, out with the kids, enjoying life. Well, that's great. Well, I'm glad you had a happy Father's Day, and congratulations again on winning up at Norwalk. Uh, Tony Schumacher, good job, and uh, good luck this weekend up in, at Norwalk. All right, man. Thank you, guys. Hope to talk next week. <laughs> All right. Driver of the U.S. Army, top fuel dragster for Don Schum Schumacher Racing. That is Tony Schumacher, winner at the Thunder Valley, uh, the Thunder Valley Nationals in Bristol. And uh, when we return, a uh, little segment that we like to call Red Light, Green Light, and a little bit more of the show coming up. Things happen fast in racing, and if you don't know where to look, you can miss it all. With Legend from Racing Electronics, you'll never miss another moment. Legend gives you live fan vision video, in-car cameras, and stats at premier national series events, and the next generation race scanner for unfiltered driver and crew audio at any motorsports event nationwide. Race fans have never been closer to the action. Welcome to the future of the fan experience. Learn more by visiting racingelectronics.com. If your AC is blowing hot air, let O'Reilly Auto Parts help bring back the coolest summer. While you may need to eventually service your AC unit, get immediate relief with Interdynamics Arctic Freeze R134A Refrigerant with Leak Sealer. Buy one, get one free at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. In order to maximize a vehicle's performance and efficiency, the proper adjustments need to be made based on the road ahead. That's true for both race car drivers on the track and for truck drivers hauling freight on the highway. But if your truck's equipped with a Detroit DT12 automated manual transmission with intelligent powertrain management, adjustments are made automatically based on GPS terrain mapping, maximizing performance and efficiency. Don't just want better business solutions, demand them. Learn more at DemandDetroit.com. <laughs> You're staged and ready for another run on the straight line. Brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Here's Doug and Marty. Big thanks to Ron Caps and Tony Schumacher for joining us on the straight line. All of our guests come via the Racing Electronics Hotline. For 30 years, Racing Electronics has been the number one choice for racing scanners, headphones, and the popular Fan Vision handheld unit. Check out all of our great new products online at Racing Electronics. Dot com and right now a segment that we like to call red light green light brought to you by o'reilly auto parts <laughs> o'reilly auto parts and this is this is a little bit of everything because we're coming down to the fourth of four in a row 
for these teams. It, this isn't NASCAR where they're on the road every week, every week, every week. They're, right. they're not really set up for this. So the, when you get to the end of four in a row, this is a, a, a long time, and there could be some burnout this weekend. Well, the NHRA is different than NASCAR from the standpoint of the guys that drive the trucks to the races are also the ones that set up the awnings yeah. and uh, you know work on the cars and do all that. It's not like a crew that flies in. So it's a lot of work for those guys doing everything that it takes, plus the, you know, the parts attrition, all the different things that have to happen to get these cars down the racetrack four weeks yeah. in a row. So yeah. a lot of things going on, and yeah, there are definitely going to be some tired puppies uh, coming around by the end of this week, and they're going to be ready for a week off, I can guarantee you that. Just like Tony said, when you're sitting in a car and it's 140 degrees, the, the, the sun is just beating down on you, you don't you know, you're you're in the sun and sweat's rolling into your eyes. Your eyes are burning. Yeah. It's it's just it's tough, man. And there's times, uh, you know, when a car will all the track down in front of you. Different things happen, and it oh. causes you to just sit. And you're just sitting. You're just you're burning up. Like, good thing you got a fire suit on because you're ready to burst into flames. <laughs> I can guarantee you. I've been there plenty of times. It is. Yeah. It is. It's just not fun. Yeah. And uh, so, and also, the crews. Are, are not uh, uh, go back home, come back to the racetrack. They're on the road, usually, right. uh, you know, in a van or a truck or something like that uh, on the road. Uh, so uh, they're they're on the road as well. Uh, right. and not Generally, maybe the crew chief will fly, you know, back yeah. to the shop, something like that. The driver will fly home or whatever. But most of the team guys are on the road that whole time. They're yeah. gone from their, you know, family, kids, whatever, for a month. So it's a, it's a big uh, it's a big deal. Headed to Norwalk, um, the Summit Racing Equipment Motorsports Park uh, for the, the Summit Nationals. Um, if, as as Tony and Ron mentioned, the Bader family uh, put on a great show. It's always it's kind of an old school racing. Uh, you know, I mean, they, they do the Night of Fire. They do match races. Uh, I mean, they, they kind of keep it old school. And that's that's the kind of feel when you show up at Norwalk. Right, racing's at night, so there's going to be you know nighttime racing going down. You're you're going to see the fires come out of the pipes <laughs> on the cars. That's what's yeah. cool about nitro cars. So it is pretty exciting. And uh, the Bader family, they you know they they turn it into entertainment. I mean, yeah. racing for them is a little bit of a byproduct. Uh, I've known <laughs> Baders for yes. a long time, and uh, you know it's a matter of racing. But to them, the biggest thing is put on a show. And yeah. you know what? That's kind of smart when you get down to it because guess what? That's what fans go to see, right. they come, they go to the, uh, you know, they, they come to the races, they go in the stands, and you know what, the, you would think, well, what is there to do in Norwalk, Ohio? Well, right up the street from there is the huge amusement park, uh, I can't even think of it. My kids used to love to Cedar go there. Point. Your Cedar Point. Yeah, the world's tallest roller coaster and all this stuff. So it's, you know, there's a lot of fun things actually to do around Norwalk. And it's one of those places where you got to go. It's just, uh, it's, uh, it's it's an event. It's a great event. And, and there's a lot of things to go along with the pound of ice cream that you can get and all kinds of food. You know, it's got like carnival food, every kind of different <laughs> right. thing in the pit area. It's a fun place. And I've been good enough or lucky enough to win that race. Uh, several times, and it's a, it's a fun place to go. It's a fun place to race. It's a fun place to be at. All the racers will love being there. Force is one of the guys that loves going there, well, right. doing match races. I've yeah. been there to do a dozen match races with Force, uh, you know, over the years. Shirley Muldowney, whatever. We've all went there and raced, and it's a, it's a fun place to race and a lot of history. Yeah, and um, uh, I was going to mention, it forces, that's one of the places that John Force just loves to go because it's kind of that old school feel where, hey, you know, no points on the line, two out of three, best match race, you know, right. racing for a trophy, that sort of thing. And Well, uh, back in the old days, right, it was, you know, you we used to do a lot of match racing, yeah. even in, you know, Force more than me, obviously, but even in the early 90s, we used to do match race. Uh, you know, probably eight or ten weekends a year we'd go to a match race, or even during the week, you know, go do match right. races. But nowadays, that's probably the only match race that John Force does, and the only match race that a lot of the teams do now is they'll go to Norwalk for their, uh, you know, for their Night show, of Fire. Night of Fire deal, mm -hmm. and it's a big match race. They probably have 30,000, 40,000 spectators in there to watch one, uh, you know, one, uh, you know, a few races, yeah. one evening of racing. So it's a it's a big deal, and it's still a good feel. Big thanks to John. Uh, big thanks to Ron uh, Caps and Tony Schumacher for joining us on the Straight Line. So for everybody involved, I'm Marty. He's Doug. We'll talk to you next week on the Straight Line.